Atelier's Mysterious Trilogy is where I started my Atelier journey thanks to Linny and Soul being my first adventure in the series. Linny and Soul is actually the final entry in the Mysterious Trilogy though, and since I loved it so much, Sophie and Ferris instantly joined my backlog of things I need to try sometime as the prior entries, so you can imagine my happiness when DX versions of these games were announced. Koei Tecmo was kind enough to provide me with a code for all three, and I'm in the middle of Sophie right now with plans to make a review in future. But since I was lucky enough to get an early copy, I thought it would be nice to show off some of the features I've been able to find to help you guys decide whether you want to pick these games up and to put a visual to some of the many extras featured in these new versions. So with that in mind, here's what you can expect to find in the Atelier Mysterious Trilogy DX games, whether you're playing them for the first time or coming back to these fun and colorful games. The main draw to these DX versions, aside from their core games, is their new story content, especially for Atelier Sophie DX and Atelier Lydia and Soul DX. Atelier Sophie DX receives a new story episode tied to a new costume that expands on Sophie's wish to be more like her grandma, featuring new events and is said to have story moments that will show her growth. Lydia and Soul DX goes in a different direction with its extra story, connecting to the Atelier spin-off game Nelke and the Legendary Alchemist and giving us the first chance to freely explore the the world of Westwald beyond the static way we could in the spin-off, complete with story moments that will apparently even include a boss battle that makes it sound like a proper episode. When I started making this video, I hadn't unlocked any of this extra content, but as I kept playing Sophie, at around the 9 hour mark, I began getting events for Sophie's new costume, which fits seamlessly into the usual flow of events. And if I didn't know it was new for this DX version, I probably wouldn't have realized it was new content, but I'm glad it's there as I really love the new costume and I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of the events that are supposed to run in conjunction with the main story. As for Lydia and Soul DX, I haven't unlocked the new content for it yet as I only jumped in for about an hour for this video as I'm planning to play through these games in order. But the website clarifies that the new Nelke features can be unlocked by finding all the fragments of the mysterious paintings from treasure chests in the painting worlds, making it sound like we'll need to explore most, if not all, of the original painting worlds to get the new Nelke one. One thing for sure is that you'll have to put at least a decent amount into each game before you're able to play with these new stories, so keep that in mind if this is the main reason you're picking up this content, as it's not something you can just boot up and play with immediately. But they do fit into these worlds well, at least making them feel like natural additions to these games. Also, there's a reason I haven't mentioned Atelier Furious DX yet, and that's because unlike Sophie and Lydian Soul DX, it doesn't feature a big new story episode, and rather adds more things to play with like new vehicles and harder bosses. Bosses. That's not to say it won't get any new story events though, as Koei Tecmo have shown on social media that as you create new things, there will be the post item creation events that Atelier usually has for special ones that are a nice cherry on top of the new quests Ferris will have to play with that will let you beat 7 new monsters and a stronger version of a boss that means Ferris has its own decent amount of new things to enjoy in its own right. The content I'm personally most excited to see is the story stuff though, although I'm sure I'll appreciate the gameplay side of things once I I've played with Ferris and have a better understanding of what they are, and in any case, it's nice that these DX versions are the first one to give more than just DLC and quality of life updates to play with. As per the previous Atelier DX games, the Mysterious DX trilogy will feature most of the DLC from the originals, which includes item packs, costumes, additional characters, and more that make getting these versions of the game really good value, especially when looking at the original price of some of the DLCs for the originals. Features like the item packs I've been able to see in both Sophie DX and Linny and Soul DX so far, with the item packs in Sophie available to use and equip after completing the tutorials for its core mechanics, and the ones in Linny and Soul available right after you make your first item. After this, I was also able to test some of the costumes for Lydia and Soul, which include them dressing up as the first Atelier Alchemist, Mari, and Ellie, which were costumes I had already seen as they were pre-order bonuses for the original, but the swimsuit costumes were something I was seeing for the first time, and while they're not the first thing I'd dress the girls in, I do like how they seem like summer clothes that they'd actually wear. There are more costumes to see, I just haven't unlocked all the party members that can wear them yet, but the list 
list for each game on the website shows there are plenty for all three, so it will be fun to discover more of these as I play, especially with the fact I'll be able to play with certain additional characters like Illumeria that I always wanted to play with in Lydia and Soul but never put the money aside for, and the fact that many of these additional characters can be given an outfit or two will make them fun to play with in the other visual elements. The only other thing I've been able to see for myself so far are all the BGM tracks that include plenty of ones from Gus games to use in pretty much every area, even including tracks from other Gus titles like Blue Reflection. Don't be fooled by the small amount of stuff I've been able to play with so far though, as there really are a lot of things to look forward to here, and I'll put the list on screen right now as there are things like new maps and difficulties in certain ones that I just haven't been able to see yet. If you've ever skipped on the season passes or DLC packs for these Atelier games, these DX versions are a fantastic way to play with all the extra content, especially since it works out to be much cheaper. And whether you're looking for extra costumes, recipes, or areas to run around in, there's plenty to make each Atelier experience go beyond the core game that makes a much better value than the original experience. While getting all the original DLC and new story content for these games would already make it worth it for me, there are other additions to sweeten things for new players and old that make replaying these games more enjoyable if you've played them before and also give them some features we'd expect from Modern Atelier. First is the fact that photo mode has been added to all three games in the way we'd expect from Ryza 1 and 2, with characters able to be posed and given a variety of facial expressions that already had me looking at the world of Lydian Soul differently when I tried it out as I never realized just how many good photo spots there were. Also, if you've ever played any of the other DX games, quality of life features like being able to dash and fast forward battles has been added too, meaning you can get through these quicker than before if you'd like, which I can imagine will be nice for those replaying the games and was nice for me the other day when I wanted to save before dashing out to work. On the topic of visuals, I'm playing on PS4 and a few years ago I played the original Lydian Soul on PS4 too, and when I compared the original to the DX version, I couldn't really find any difference between the two visually, aside from maybe a few extra plants added to the title screen. I do hope there will be some difference for those playing on Switch though, as I remember when I tried the Japanese demo for Lydian Soul finding the visuals to look flatter than they did on PS4, but the Switch footage of all versions seems fairly promising if Koei Tecmo Japan's livestream last month was anything to go off, so if any of you end up picking up the Switch version, feel free to comment below about how it's looking and performing, as I'm sure those planning to pick it up would be interested to know. Getting back to my PS4 version though, while there weren't any noticeable upgrades, I was pleased that they didn't feel dated thanks to a lot of the character designs being so sharp and colorful, and also the fact that Sophie still performs at a nice 60 frames per second on PS4, making it feel nice and smooth to play. With load screens also being very quick and snappy, the makes what it lacks in modern visuals more like Ryza 2 easily being made up for by how quick it is to get around its world. Another thing I thought I should mention for new plays is that Atelier Sophie DX and presumably Fierce default to having the Japanese dub on when you first play, even though they both have English dubs. This is probably to make it less jarring when you get to Lydian Soul and can no longer hear English voiceover as it isn't dubbed, but I know some people want to use the English dub regardless, so just keep this in mind as there is the option to do so in Sophie and Fierce, it just might not seem obvious at the start. Finally, as a nice little bonus, each game comes with a digital art book, something I didn't know until I received the game, so it was a nice touch as Noko and Yugen's art for these games is really, really beautiful. I've only looked at the Lydian Soul one so far to avoid spoilers, and there are some really pretty promo artworks that I was very excited to see for the first time, and they all play the lovely soundtrack in the background that make them really nice to open up and take a look at while looking back on the game. Whether it's additions like this and photo mode, or all the DLC and new content, it's stuff like this that make it seem like Gust and Koei Tecmo have done their best to make these DX versions worth it, whether you're getting them for the first time or trying to get these games in their most complete form, and extras like this definitely make it seem like the best way to enjoy the mysterious trilogy. If you're like me and missed a majority of the Mysterious Trilogy and even more of its DLC, these DX versions feel incredibly worth it. They pack a ton of the DLC from each of these games into these new versions along with their original stories and extra content, including story quests and art books to sweeten the deal. And they're definitely worth it if you don't have all or some of these games already, and serve as the best way to get the most complete version of these stories for the best price and on the most systems. If you happen to already have these games, 
whether or not it's worth it for you will depend how much DLC you own of each one and if there's something you'd replay anyway. If you're looking to play on Switch, the DX versions bring all three to the systems rather than just Lydia and Soul that will allow more people to play them, especially considering this will be Sophie and Ferris's first time on the system. If you're someone who happens to have these games and all their DLC on PS4, Steam, or even the old Vita, it will depend how much you want to see the new content and if you think the amount of what's new is worth the price. Unfortunately, I can't speak on the length of any of this new content as I'm still playing, although in terms of Sophie, I've seen at least three events since getting the new costume and I'm sure there will be more. And considering these are more modern Atelier games that people may already have, it is nice these new versions occur into more modern systems and that for systems like the PS4 and Steam that they've already been on, at least there's new content and quality of life elements to make it a little more worth it for those who want to play again or just support the series. I hope this video was helpful to those considering picking up these games and I'll be curious to hear how many of you guys plan to pick it up on its fast approaching launch day and beyond. Until then, I'll be playing more Sophie, enjoying taking photos and discovering its new story and old in this trilogy full of mystery that I'm excited to keep discovering. Thank you for watching this video, let me know in the comments below if you've played the Mysterious Trilogy before, and whether you have or not, let me know if you plan on picking up these DX versions. You can like and share this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more JRPG content like this, and ring that bell to get notifications on whenever I post so you don't miss a thing. You can check out more videos here, and you can find me on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at JRPG Jungle. Links to those will be in the description below, and until next time, thank you, bye!